Hi, I'm back with video number four discussing the brain and understanding a little bit more about it. And we are discussing the cerebellum. As we have um, mentioned before, if you've been watching the previous videos, uh, the cerebellum, whole, it takes up about 10% of the space up here in our skull, but it holds approximately 50% of the neurons in our brain. It's not actually giving any instruction or commanding any instruction, but it is a modulator. It modulates rate, rhythm, force and accuracy of all our motor output, including modulating the smoothness of our thought and our emotions. So it's huge, hugely impactful. So as we said before, it's reliant on the information that it receives from the body, but it's reliant on the quality of information. So the output really relies on the input when it comes to the cerebellum. And if you can relate that to maybe how you approach your training, what do you start with? Where is your focus? Is it on the output or is it on the input? Because when you go to pick up a weight, are you just focused on how heavy it is? Or are you focused on where you are drawing from inside to actually make the movement? I'm just taking that a little bit, <laughs> a little bit off kilter, but not far from the actual truth. So the cerebellum is described as having three functional divisions. It's known by um, quite a few different names, but for simplicity, we're going to stick with their functional names. So if this is my cerebellum sitting on the back of my head, I've got the medial zone, I've got the intermediate zone, and I've got the lateral zone. Okay, so for today, we're actually going to talk about the medial zone. It's It's pretty self-explanatory that it comes down the midline of the body. Um, but the main input to the medial cerebellum comes from our vestibular system, which is our inner ear balance system, also our visual, our jaw and our cranium. Um, our output from the medial cerebellum is um, that it modulates and coordinates the spine and the systems that are associated with the spine, um, which would include balance, posture and spinal curvature deviations, uh, endocrine and visceral functions, including digestion and gaze fixation um, and the accuracy of eye motion. So the eyes, the ears, sorry, the eyes, the ears, and the tongue are all actually intrinsically connected or attached to our spine. So when I work individually with clients, I will, when I pick up um, a deviation one side or the other, I will often use tongue, jaw, eye positions to try and drive the system a little bit from one side to the other, heightening one side or the other. If you think of your vestibular system, um, as a good old old school sound system hi-fi where you could turn the volume up on the right speaker and then turn it down turn it up on the left speaker it's a little bit like that and we want to try and find the balance homeostasis try and get back to that place of balance um, your eyes and your balance then reflexively control our posture um, if either of them is off, if either your balance or your eyes are a bit off, it creates an instability in your spine. So our focus today is actually the vestibular system because it is epically, epically important. <laughs> um, it consists of your otolith organs and the semicircular canals in your ears. Um, that are communicating with your cerebellum a million signals a second at rest. So with me bobbing my head up and down, just simply doing that is heightening that number of signals immensely. So can you imagine when you are moving around, when you're moving your head in interesting positions, those signals that are firing off. One of the cerebellum's jobs is to actually take the spurge of signals 
and modulate them so appropriate muscle recruitment and control can be exerted. Remember, our primary role is survival of the individual. So your vestibular system is tonic. It's firing all the time. It never rests. And the brain always has to know where your head is in space. I'm noticing I'm talking with my hands. Um, where, where, your head, where your head is. And the cerebellum then can reflexively fire the extensor chain muscles to stay upright and to stay out of harm's way. So it, it is constantly telling you whether you're in a safe zone or not, which then, of course, would also be driving the nervous system and the emotions. Um, there's also a reflex between the eyes and the inner ear called the vestibular ocular reflex. And that is our, our ability to keep our eyes fixated on something while we're moving around. So can you imagine trying to play, play a game of tennis if your eyes had to always go where your head was going? So... Basically, the vestibular ocular reflex allows our eyes to move independently of our head, separating them enough so that doesn't overstimulate the vestibular system. When we overstimulate the when we overstimulate the vestibular system, we tend to feel like we want to poop, puke, and pass out. <laughs> Maybe not in that order, but that's when you've had. Um, too much and then the system that helps to control that to dampen that down is called our Purkinje system and that's the system that when you are you've had too much alcohol or you're high that's the system that gets knocked out and that's when you start to feel a little dizzy a little queasy and then sometimes you have to dash to the light of the bathroom Okay, so um, we, to balance our midline of our cerebellum, would need to possibly stimulate some of our, our, vis our vestibular system. So I'm going to have you guys stand up. So standing up, we're going to check in with our vestibular system. I'd like you to put one foot in front of the other. It doesn't matter which one, heel to toe, that you are making a straight line with those legs going, with feet going forward. Set yourself up to win. Find your balance between the front and the back. And then make zombie arms like we did before with our arm flicking. Hands together, arms straight out in front of those shoulders. And then just close your eyes and notice what goes on. Breathe. Now, if you feel yourself falling to one side, it is the first side that you are struggling on. When you're ready, open those eyes, bring it back down. We can try the other leg in front. I always think it's worth to try both so that I can check whether it's more of an ankle thing or whether it really is a bit of a head thing. So set yourself up to win. Hands Extend those fingers and closing your eyes. So my first, my first feeling both times was that I was going to fall to the left. It felt like I was just fighting the left the whole time. It's not super obvious. I didn't actually fall, but it was that initial, as I got there and, my, and closed my eyes, my head went, mm. and so it felt like this side couldn't, hold me up quite as quickly or respond quite as quickly as the other side. So I'm going to try and balance that out a little bit. You may have a very different response <laughs> and you might find it's very obvious and you do fall right over. So um, I'm going to bring those feet together-ish and I'm going to bounce my heels, relax the knees and just kind of bounce the heels and I'm going to close my eyes and just breathe. Now, because I felt that I was going to fall firstly to my left, which probably looks like I'm pointing to my right on your screen, but that is my left, I am going to slowly turn my head away from the side. And in one swift movement, keep bouncing my heels, eyes closed, bring my head back to the middle. And I'm going to do it again. Slowly turn the head to the side, 
spin it back to the middle. I obviously don't want to give myself whiplash. But what I'm doing is spinning those semicircular canals towards the left. And then stop. And then I would go ahead and maybe, maybe have a roll down first. Maybe have a little roll down. I was rushing it. I could have a roll down. Take a nice deep breath in. And breathe out and roll it back up again. And come to stand nice and tall. I can give myself a little tapping on the head. A little tapping on the shoulders. A little tapping on the lower back, just on that sacrum. A little swipe across the lower back from hip bone to hip bone. Across across the sacroiliac joints and then just shake it out and then maybe I would test it again <laughs> and close my eyes and check and that time well, it definitely pushed back a little quicker and I felt myself just a little bit more stable if that didn't do enough to make you feel stable I would suggest that you could try that with the other angles of the head so I'll keep going towards my left because that was where I was at and either or really. But I could do ear to the side and pull, pull it up really quickly. That would then spin the canals in that direction. If I did side and back and then in one movement spun it in the diagonal or I could do side and forward and spin it in the back diagonal. So those are all the directions of your ear canals. And you know what, if you have like, sometimes you get like a blocked ear, your ear just goes a little bit, mm, try it, just close your eyes, bounce your heels, slowly turn away from the blocked ear and spin towards it a couple of times. And when you stop and maybe just move around or tap on the head, tap on the shoulders with a negative electrical charge, maybe it will settle, it'll, it'll just clear itself up. So those are all little ear things that we can certainly try. When it comes to our training, um, the vestibular system obviously makes things very interesting for the cerebellum. Remember, the cerebellum likes to learn. We'll get into that when we cover the, the intermediate part of the cerebellum. But it likes to learn. So by moving the head in interesting positions, you are recruiting the cerebellum much, um, much more optimally. It's firing a little bit harder. It's going to put a little bit more effort into getting the rate, the rhythm, the force, the accuracy correct. And that is going to drive your workout forward. So even though today there wasn't a heck of a lot of movement going on, I hope that you got something um, from that. And in our next section, our next video, we will be covering the intermediate part of the cerebellum and that starts to then refer to our joints so we will be moving quite a bit in the next video thank you and any questions please please you know where to find me just send me a message